Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Over in the Photoshop tutorial forum, I had a request on how to create seamless textures in Photoshop. So I'm going to grab a good candidate for making a seamless texture, and it is this one right here. It's a great texture, but you can just bet if you start seeing this being repeated multiple times on a object you're gonna know right away that it uh, that it is being repeated for several reasons one because of the numbers up there and two you see these seams right down the center if we move it over to the side then you'll see a seam here where they meet and so that's not going to work well one of the first things I want to consider is getting rid of these telltale signs so I'm going to grab my cropping tool and I'm just going to crop out those numbers because that will destroy my work okay and that's looking pretty good but another telltale sign that it's a seamless that it is not a or that it is a repeating image even though we might make it seamless you're going to notice the repetition if we scale it down and use it on an object you're going to see this repeating pattern over and over again and that's another telltale sign so I will get rid of that area now the texture looks far more uniform If we come up here to the filter, come down here to other and offset, and let's just put in a number, say, of 500 pixels and 500, we can see the horizontal seam here and the vertical seam right down the center. So we want to get rid of that. So as Making seamless textures, there are many, many different ways to do it, and I've seen lots of different ways. This is just the way that works for me. It's simple, and to me, it's fairly quick. So I'm going to grab my rectangular selection tool, and I'm just going to make a large selection on the top here. I'm going to right-click and hit Layer via Copy. Now I've got a copy of that. What I want to do is come up to Edit, Transform. I want to flip it vertically because now I'll move it down here. And if we zoom in, let me click off Zoom In, this area here meets up with that area right up there. So now I'm going to use my Eraser tool. And right where this seam is, I've got a soft edged brush that I've selected. I'm just going to brush away that seam and you'll never you never know it was there. Okay, and come up here to layer and flatten it which merges it all together. So now we've got the top and the bottom taken care of. I'm going to come back here, marquee or rectangular selection tool, and I'll create a selection of either the left or the right side. It doesn't matter. And I want to copy that, edit, transform. And now I want to flip this one horizontally, and I'll move it right over here. And you can see that this little this edge lines right up with that edge and it's identical all the way down so now I just need to erase away that seam and we are on our way to making a seamless texture. 
Now, depending upon the results that you get as you are erasing here, sometimes, depending upon the texture, a soft edge brush like the one I've chosen down here may not work so well. You may want to choose a faux brush, something that has more of a irregular pattern, and because it helps to cover up the areas that you have erased so that you don't notice that you have erased some areas. So now that I'm done with that, let's flatten it out. Let's come up here to filter and other and offset. And we now have a seamless texture except for one thing. There's a phrase, there's a, uh, a word for this and I can't remember what it is, but when you see the mirror image, uh, book match, something like, um, something like that. You can see even though there's not a seam here, um, you can see the reverse on the left and right, left and right, and you see it here as well. So that doesn't look too good. So I'll put this at 100 and 100, maybe 150 and 150. and click OK. What I want to do is use my cloning tool. If I hold down, I can choose my clone stamp tool, and that's what I want. And over here, you can see I have exactly what I explained earlier, a, an irregularly shaped brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my control key and notice my the shape of my cursor changes and I'm just going to sample an area by clicking and now I'll release my alt button and I'm just going to click in here and cover up these areas that are obviously uh, that, uh, that have that book match appearance to them now you see I'm sampling and copying this area over to here so I want to sample a different area. And just I'm just going to sample several areas and do some covering up here. I think this is obvious because it's it's too it's it's ob it's obvious that I did a cloning operation here, so I'll just cover up that one. Now down here, notice the texture around these telltale signs is much different than up here. So I don't want to go sampling up here and then painting down here. I want to try to keep the same localized appearance. So I'm going to come over here and sample and then paint over here. Sample again and I'll paint down there. Another, Some other telltale signs in this are these rust spots. So I want to cover some of those up because if you scale this down, say in view, apply it to something and start painting, I mean start uh, rendering, you're going to see these rust spots show up over and over and over again and they'll all be in a horizontal line and a vertical line depending upon the scale uh, that you set the texture to be. Okay, let's uh, come up here to Filter, Other, and Offset. And let's look at our work. I'm not sure about this little area right here. You do have a noticeable difference in the texture here versus on this side. And this line, there isn't a line, but this area right here differentiates between those two. So. I think what I'll do is I like the texture on this side. This side's nice and rough. 
So I will alt and then sample some areas over there and just apply some here. And blend in this area here a little better. And I'm really not even painting, I'm just clicking. Okay, let's come back up and check our work with our filter. A much better random look here. We've gotten rid of the seams and we've gotten rid of the telltale cloning um, um, evidence as well. So that's how you make a repeating or a seamless texture right here in Photoshop and it works with virtually every single image or texture that you can create. Just be extra careful when you are using wood if you are uh, creating a seamless wood texture because uh, different boards even if it all came from the same tree, can have different grain patterns to it. And you definitely want to pay attention and be careful and make sure the lines in your grain all line up when you start cloning and um, copying parts of the image and moving them from the left side to the right side, top and bottom. But these are the basic fundamental um, methods for creating a seamless texture. So I hope this helps you out in your 3D work and thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.